In this episode, we're leaving Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, the Halifax area, and we're going to do a little day trip down to Peggy's Cove. Peggy's Cove is a picturesque village and lighthouse, and it's among the most photographed places in Canada. A romantic folktale is told about how the cove got its name. Young Peggy was traveling to Halifax to meet her fiancé when the ship she was in foundered on the rocks. She was rescued by local folk, and when visitors went to see her, they would say they were going to see Peggy of the Cove. Let's go to this village and look around. It should be very pretty. Hello friends, I'm at Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia. It's about a 45 minute ride from Halifax. Uh, that is if you take one of the toll bridges and we did. Uh, I'm gonna show you the lighthouse. We're gonna look around the little town here. It's a small town, but it's supposed to be one of the most photographed areas of Nova Scotia. And uh, it is beautiful. It is a natural beauty area. And I look forward to showing you some of it. We're at Peggy's Cove now. From what I read, collision of crustal plates beneath the ocean floor forced molten material to the surface, which solidified as grayish-white, coarse-grained granite. Rocks have been here for eons, give or take a few eons. The crustal plates are still moving, but no more than an inch a century. Hasn't been a glacier hereabouts for 10,000 years, Enjoy the beautiful scenery, especially when venturing on the rocks. Be careful. Peggy's Cove is home to friendly fishermen, and the irresistible sea, as it has for eons, still breaks on the immovable shore. Before Peggy's Cove was a community, it was a popular destination among fishermen. But what inspired these fishermen to make this their permanent home? It was this sheltered cove, which offered close proximity to the large populations of fish in St. Margaret's Bay and a safe place to land their catch. So in 1811, six fishermen and their families became the first permanent residents of Peggy's Cove, receiving a land grant of 800 acres from King George III through the Nova Scotia Registry of Grants. More families came in the years that followed, and the community of Peggy's Cove, as you see it today, began to take shape. Residents built simple, sturdy houses around the cove, later adding a schoolhouse in 1839, a lighthouse in 1868, and a church, St. John's Anglican Church, in 1850, rebuilt in the 1880s. In these early years, the community was self-sufficient. There was a general store and a post office. Families raised livestock and a few crops, despite the thin soil. They also traded fish for food and other goods by sea until highways provided more convenient links with communities across the province. Today, you'll find that several families continue to make their living from the sea, just like the first families who settled here so many years ago. And some families have called it home for generations, proving that the lure of Peggy's Cove remains strong. While thousands come to visit Peggy's Cove, the population is about 30, although it does increase to around 35 in the summer season.
nature at its finest. And Renee and Jenny, they didn't brave it down here to the waterfront. They're observing from a safer distance near the lighthouse.
thank you so much for joining us on the journey and watching this episode of Jean and Renee Travel Adventures. From here, we're headed back into New Brunswick to St. John, and from there, we're headed into the New England states of the USA. Can't wait to show you some really pretty things.